add a teaspoon of baking soda to your beans, it will help them turn soft. Now, if they're really old, you might need more than a teaspoon. I'm gonna go ahead and I am cooking my beans. Now, I did soak them overnight with a teaspoon of baking soda. Then I added a teaspoon of baking soda while they're cooking. And they are gonna cook for about an hour. In the meantime, I'm gonna work on some other projects and then I'll get back to you when the beans are soft. I'm gonna show you something that we're gonna use today. This is an antique bean pot, and we are gonna use this to bake our beans at a low temperature for a couple hours. But first, we wanna get them good and soft before we put them in the oven and add all of our other ingredients. All right, the beans are really soft. They got soft in about an hour and a half of cooking. Now we're gonna add all our other ingredients. I'm gonna share with you the link to the original video I did where I made these calico beans in a jar. But the purpose of this video is to show you how you can take old beans and make them soft. Okay, so here we go. The beans are cooked. They are almost totally soft. Now we're gonna add all of my ingredients. So this was in the jar, the mixes. It's all kinds of seasonings and some brown sugar. So we're gonna add that. And then it does call for water. Which that water is going to all evaporate when we cook it. And then it calls for three cups of barbecue sauce. So we have three cups of barbecue sauce that's going in here as well. Now this is the old fashioned way of making baked beans. It's not a quick way. It's extremely slow way of making food. But dried beans are so cheap. They're cheap because you have to cook them. So you don't have the convenience of them. All right, so there we go. Now we're gonna mix this all up. We're gonna pour it into our bean pot. Now we have some bacon. Now this is bacon ends. So the, this is little pieces of ham and bacon. So we're just gonna drop that into the beans as well. Now at this point, you could can the beans if you wanted to, pressure can them, but we are actually gonna cook these for a meal. So I'm just taking this bacon and I'm just chopping it up. And that will cook with the beans and it will be so good. Now you could put these in raw, but I did fry it ahead of time, just slightly fried it. That way it is partly cooked. We will use a little bit of the fat to give it right. Now we have a very old bean pot. And we're gonna go ahead and put the beans in. While we're cooking the beans and getting them all soft, I am going to make a batch of some blueberry jelly because I had some blueberries I needed to get used up. And once we're done with that, then we'll go right into making the beans. So, once again, it's really important that you add baking soda to your water that you are soaking your beans in and to the water that you're cooking your beans if you have very old beans. It's time to get some of them preps out of your closet that you've been storing away for years and it's time we start using them. And that will all start with some of those old beans that you bought.
I've got to tell you, these baked beans are amazing. So if you have something in your cupboard, in your pantry for a long time, don't throw it out because it can turn out to be one of the best things that you've ever made. And take a look at these beans. So when I put them in the refrigerator, they really did thicken up. Absolutely amazing. <laughs> I got this greenhouse looking good. So all greenhouses now are looking good and I don't need to come out here now to the end of the week. We've had record winds. What you want to do is make sure your greenhouse is totally fastened shut. You want to shut all the windows to it. You want to shut all the doors to it. The whole way to the bottom. If you have any loose areas, that's where the wind will catch hold of and it'll rip their cover right off. Are some of you like me? You just have to get outside. Even when the weather is not quite cooperative. We had a mild winter, but it seems like spring does not want to arrive. That's not going to stop me. All right, I got everything together. wanted to show you in a tangible way how I plant because it's very simple and easy and for a few of you who are really interested it can be a lifesaver for all of you so what we do is I'm planting a wide variety of herbal seeds so these are all kinds of seeds all you do is you broadcast them broadly in other words we are just gonna put one pack of seeds on the top of here let me show you so these are bowls from the Dollar Tree. Everybody's intrigued of how I do this, but it works 100%. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna open up one pack of seeds, find which ones I want. The Johnny Jump Ups are my favorite, one of my favorites. We're gonna open up a whole pack of seeds, okay? Now this looks like it would be haphazard, and it is, and it works. So these are the Johnny Jump Ups. We're going to open up the pack of seeds and we're going to spill the whole pack of seeds into this container right here. So we're just going to sprinkle a whole pack of seeds on. Just like that, we're done. We just planted one. And now what we're going to do is we are going to water them. Now you can cover these seeds up if you want, but really fine seeds, you don't have to. We're gonna give it a good water, and it's probably about the only watering we're gonna do until they are fully emerged. All right? These come from the Dollar Tree. You can buy them on Amazon, but they are expensive on Amazon. Buy these. Buy as many of these as you can, because this is a lifesaver. You're gonna put the dome over top, and then you're going to close it, and now you're done. You're totally done until they start sprouting. Once they're sprouted, you're gonna take the dome off. You're not gonna use the dome anymore. And then all you're gonna do is, when it comes time to planting in the garden or wherever you want it, you're going to just flip the whole bowl over and transplant it. So you're gonna dig a hole the size of the bowl. You're gonna flip it over and then you're gonna transplant it. That's all you have to do with these perennials. It's absolutely amazing. A very simple, it, you don't even need to think about it. It's that simple. Now I'm gonna do this times 50 because I have 50 different perennials that I have to plant today to get them started. So we're just gonna do, I'll do one more for you to show you. 
The finer the seed, the finer you cover them. So if they're really, really fine seeds, which these kind are, you will not really need to cover them at all. That's the rule of thumb. The bigger the seed, the more you have to cover it. All right, so let's get another one here. I'm gonna do it again. This is the tansy, which is extremely fine. Go ahead. And we could just go like this. I am covering these up just a little bit. That's it. That's all we have to do. Then we're gonna water them. This is rain water that I'm using. If you're using city water, make sure your water sits for 48 hours before you use it for watering any kind of plants because city water is treated water. Oh, by the way, no, I do not poke holes in these tubs and these bowls. I do not poke holes in them. You just don't overwater them. And when you put the dome on, you really won't need to water them because it produces its own moisture. If you feel more comfortable in poking holes in them, you can. I just don't do that and it works great for me. Just don't overwater them. Hey, don't leave yet. If you like me and you love gardening, why don't you check out this amazing website? It is Renee's Gardens. She has been a family owned business for many, many years. I've been an affiliate with her for seven years. The links are under every one of my videos. She has heirloom, she's got organic, she's got herbs, she's got flowers, vegetables, plus a beautiful website that she has other things as well. I hope you check it out.